uh, rate is somewhere around 10,000 patches every 42 days, um, which is similar to the Linux kernel. So it's kind of a really big, uh, it's a kind of a really big uh, beastie, right? Um, uh, but but rather than it just sort of being a collection of, of, of humans, we've, we've got all of these people from all of these different places um, and figuring out how to, how to make sure that everyone is empowered to participate and everyone can collaborate sort of on, on equal footing um, winds up being uh, almost in and of itself a, a full-time job. Um, so in order to structure ourselves to be able to do something crazy like this, um, we, we didn't want to invent everything from scratch. Um, uh, you might not be able to tell that from some of our source code trees sometimes, but um, uh, we, we thought we would learn from, from some, some projects in the past. Uh, very specifically, we, we borrowed very heavily from Ubuntu. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the Ubuntu uh, uh, developer summits, design developer summits, um, this is uh, a t-shirt from back when they still had them in person. Um, they stopped that, I think, because Mark kind of got tired of funding all of the canonical developers to fly together in one place. There's a lot of them, and it's really expensive. So I'm really appreciative of him that he did that for as long as he did. Um, uh, but we, we picked up uh, the time-based release idea um, from them. That, that actually helps with the bike shedding uh, problem around whether or not we're ready to release. Uh, and we have, so far, uh, never missed a release date. Um, it's really easy when you release whatever the state of the tree is uh, on the release date to hit your release date. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but we have we have released on time every time. Uh, we do this just like Ubuntu on a six month cadence. And in fact, early on, um, we very explicitly pinned our uh, our releases to the Ubuntu uh, releases. We're sort of trying to, to to be part of that greater ecosystem um, that Mark was talking about back in the day. That if we if we actually started to align cadences, then it becomes easy for us to to release software and for you know Ubuntu or Fedora or whoever to uh, to have it in in their latest. Uh, release so that you get the latest Ubuntu, you have to get install OpenStack, and everything works. Um, we grew to the point where that ceased being logistically feasible because we also have these in-person design summits six times or twice a year, and it turns out that finding a venue, um, uh, as was just alluded to with the, the size and growth of scale, finding a venue that can, um, that can hold giant amounts of people um, uh, is a large logistical challenge. So, um, so we can't just uh, tie our releases to those if we need to get together when the venues are available for us to rent. Um, so that isn't quite as aligned as it used to be, um, and I've possibly talked too long about that. Um, uh, and 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 then one of the things that we that we picked up, which is fun, uh, that everybody uh, at least I don't know everybody likes it. I like about Ubuntu is the is the, the the code names. I have no idea when somebody tells me about Ubuntu 12.04. I cannot remember which one that is, but I I do know that I've got some servers running precise and some servers running trusty. Right, um, uh, and that's a really useful uh, way to um, uh, to to talk about and to and to deal with with releases so that people can uh, communicate effectively. Um, just like them, we we do them in alphabetical order. However, we're a little different from Ubuntu in that we don't have a benevolent dictator for life. We don't have a benevolent dictator. We don't have a dictator. We don't have any single leader. Um, we are a uh, a leaderless anarchic collective. Um, uh, who really, really like bike shedding on policy and process. Uh, so we might have taken that from Debian. Um, uh, so all of our decisions are democratic, right? We, don't, we can't do the, the, the great Shuttleworth blog post where he's like, so I've decided that we're going to call this Oniric Ocelot um, and then tell us, in fact, what both of those words mean. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, that's not a thing we do. Um, what we can do is we can have lots of conversations ahead of time uh, about what the name should be. Uh, and then we can and then we can vote. Um, and this is this is uh, this is fun in a lot of ways. Uh, we we have to put some rules and structure around that because when you have two thousand developers um, and and you know seventeen thousand uh, foundation members, everybody's got an opinion. And if just the door is wide open for names that we might name the next release, we might actually miss the release date because we wouldn't have been able to agree on a name. Um, so uh, so part of what we do with this is we we try and pick names from. Uh, from the cities or, or, or geographical features around them of where we're going to have the design summit. Um, a couple of examples of this are uh, a few releases ago we released OpenStack Grizzly. Um, that was associated with our San Diego design summit. Um, and there, there isn't really a town near San Diego called Grizzly, uh, but there is, a, there is a grizzly bear on the California state flag. Uh, and also grizzly bears are cool. Um, so uh, uh, it's a great first instance of breaking all of the rules of our process. Um, uh, but, uh, but that worked out well for us. Uh, after that, we, um, we, we released OpenStack Havana, 
Uh, we did not, in fact, have our design summit in Cuba, although that would have been really awesome. Um, uh, we, we had that one in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it, in, case you, in case you didn't know, there is a town called Havana in Oregon. I still don't know why people didn't uh, pick Hood uh, after Mount Hood. Uh, that's the one that I was voting for, but I, I did not win. Um, not Cuba. Uh, Ice House uh, was a really fun one. Uh, we, we had the design summit in Hong Kong after that. Um, and I don't know how many of you know much about any of the, any of the Chinese languages, but um, words starting with I uh, are not particularly common. Um, they are, in fact, non-existent. Uh, it is not a thing that happens. <laughs> Luckily, uh, Hong Kong, for us, Hong Kong was a, uh, a, a British colony for quite some time, uh, and there was an Ice House street um, in, uh, in Hong Kong. So, uh, so we, we kind of we slipped by on that one. Um, Juno is, is Atlanta. There's nothing really funny to say about that. Um, uh, our most recent, uh, the release we're working on right now uh, is the Kilo release. Uh, it'll be coming out soon-ish. Um, uh, and this one was tied to our, uh, our Paris Design Summit, uh, which was the most recent summit we had. Um, and the, the cool one about this is that Paris is where the actual, the actual physical kilogram is, which is the, the thing that actually defines a kilogram. It's physically in Paris, and you can go look at it and be like, that's a kilogram, man. Um, so that was sort of a clear win. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was really good. It's also great because it's four characters long, so I don't have to type lots of characters when I, when I have to deal with this. Um, might have been one of the things that was good about Juno. Again, I don't know why we picked Havana over Hood, because um, Hood's shorter. Um, in any case, so this brings us to, uh, in, in a long and rambling way, to, uh, to the first sort of topic of, uh, of the day that's, that's even marginally relevant to anything, um, which is that uh, recently we've been trying to figure out what to call the L release. Because uh, that's the next one that's coming up, and we've got a we've got a design summit coming up in Vancouver. Um, uh, so so part of that process involves finding a whole bunch of L words that make sense uh, for for Vancouver, um, and uh, and then starting to debate and and yell at each other about them, uh, and eventually get to the point where where we vote about things. Um, one of the choices that came up was Lemming. Um, this uh, this is. Um, there is not a town called Lemming. Uh, there is, however, a, 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 a geographical feature in British Columbia called Lemming Peak. Um, as you might imagine, the marketing community of OpenStack wasn't particularly happy about the idea of calling the next OpenStack release Lemming. Um, for, for those of you who are unaware, that's because um, uh, Lemmings commit mass suicide by following each other off of cliffs. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean... In general, when you're trying to convince somebody to use your software, might not be the best mental image uh, that, you, that you want them to associate with you. Here's the trick, though. Um, lemmings don't actually do that. Um, that's actually a com complete and utter falsehood. They do migrate across, across places, um, and because lots of them migrate, and they are rodents, uh, they're not particularly the largest thing, um, and they have to cross rivers and streams and things of that nature, some of them do drown. They, they don't commit suicide, they're just they're trying to do something, they, they fail. It's kind of, you know, what you expect of thousands of rodents going across Canada. Um, uh, sometimes rodents drown, uh, I suppose. Um, the, really, the part where this really starts to drive me a little crazy um, is that uh, Disney produced a documentary in 1958 called White Wilderness. Um, in this documentary, um, Disney, uh, well, let's Let's say they didn't really make a documentary. Um, they I, I don't think we had the word for it in 1958. I believe now we might call it a mockumentary. Um, you might just call it absolute, complete fabrication. Um, you, you might call it animal abuse. Um, because what they did is they shipped in a bunch of lemmings from another part of Canada, and then the camera crew forced them off the cliff. Uh, and then, they, and then they, they, they filmed this, and they put them into the documentary. And of course, because this is how the industry works, they won an Oscar. Um, <laughs> And if anybody thinks the Academy Awards aren't, uh, you know, anyway, so <laughs> might not want to go too far with that in this town, I might get stoned to death. Um, in any case, uh, that's, um, uh, yeah. So, so in general, the, the, the actual definition of the word irony, um, which we use a lot because we have an open stack project called Ironic, um, which, which you use to boot bare metal servers. Um, uh, also because we have a lot of hipsters. Um, the, the, the definition of it is, is when the actual meaning of something is the opposite of the literal meaning. And this doesn't mean the new definition of the word literal, where the, the word literal means figurative. Um, this means the, 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 the 
the real definition of the word literal. Um, uh, I, I find it more amusing that a, a recursive definition of irony could be that the lemmings metaphor only works because people are lemmings and their adherence to the myth that lemmings are like lemmings. Um, anyway, so, uh, so I suggest that, uh, that you, you readjust your, um, your internal thinking about what, what lemmings are, what, what they do, and, uh, and possibly what it says about um, uh, media conglomerates who like to make money. Um, this obviously could never happen to us in the tech community. Uh, we don't have any sorts of statements that have just sort of been floated completely erroneously out into the ether. Nobody ever says anything on Slashdot that's untrue. Um, uh, because we're, 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 we're technologists. We, we like facts. We like, uh, we like actual information. Um, uh, we, we certainly wouldn't ever keep the, uh, the myth that MySQL doesn't have transactions uh, for 10, 15, or 20 years after, after that's ceased to be the case. Um, we, we certainly don't take any pleasure in, uh, in, in mocking MongoDB for being web scale, uh, although we do really enjoy the funnier die cartoon. Um, we, we wouldn't ever just spend all of our time talking about how PHP is inherently insecure, uh, regardless of the fact that there's some pretty large, well-known uh, web applications running in it. Um, uh, we, we certainly wouldn't promulgate the idea that frequent password rotation is secure. Um, none of us work for companies that have ridiculous corporate policies about doing that that are actually proven to be drastically less secure. Um, we, we keep up with them because, in fact, we've in, enacted some of those into government regulations about what you have to do uh, to be considered compliant uh, and to be able to sell to the federal government. Um, uh, and and we, we, certainly wouldn't, uh, we certainly wouldn't think um, that this VNet needs to be replaced. Yeah, all right. Good. You know, we got to keep those laptop boot times down, guys. Um, so anyway, just in case you were all wondering, uh, I'm sure that you're uh, that you're all, all you know on the edge of your seat, wanting to know the, the results. Uh, the next OpenStack release will be called Liberty. Um, it, it is not just because we're um, uh, American exceptionalists and and want to to hoist our our, uh, our internal ideas on to the our fine neighbors in Canada. Um, there is in fact a town in Saskatchewan. Um, in uh, uh, named Liberty. Um, for those of you who aren't aware with Canadian geography, Saskatchewan is not the same province as British Columbia, which is where Vancouver is in. Um, but again, we can't really expect a uh, largely American uh, population to know the differences between Canadian provinces, can we? <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I still really like uh, Morgan's suggestion that, that didn't work out of Lovelace uh, to, to honor uh, uh, Ada Lovelace, but um, that also didn't work out, uh, apparently because it's not a town, uh, even though Grizzly and Kilo and... Anyway, um, <laughs> so, so in, in theory, I'm, I'm, I'd like to talk some, um, even though I really was just talking about lemmings and voting um, and, and weird politics inside of OpenStack, um, uh, about free software. And most of the time, it's entirely possible, especially this day and age, that, it's, that you may not know um, the, the four freedoms uh, that are associated with free software. Um, uh, so before we actually talk about why it might be important, I thought we would talk about what it is, in fact. Um, there's, there's four. They're, um, they're numbered starting with zero, uh, as, as any good computer uh, geek would, would enjoy. Uh, freedom zero being the, the freedom to run the program as you wish, for any purpose. This is the reason that, that staunch adherents to this uh, don't particularly care for the Vim license, uh, as the, the Vim author would like for you to not use it for evil. Um, that's, oh, that's not really freedom. Um, uh, the the uh, freedom number one, the freedom to study how the program works and to change it so that it does your computing as you wish, right? So to empower you to be able to do that. Um, uh, also, you should have the freedom to redistribute the copies, redistribute copies of what the, the software you received was so you can help your neighbor. Maybe they don't have the ability to download it themselves. Uh, maybe you, you want to go out and do some, some advocacy. You want to help some people. Uh, a friend of mine uh, did some work in... Um, uh, in, the, uh, in a town, this name I cannot remember, in, in the middle of, uh, of Nigeria uh, a few years ago, helping to set up uh, PostgreSQL uh, servers for the local government there. Um, uh, not being able to go in and bring software with her would have uh, made that uh, task much harder. Um, uh, and finally, uh, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified version. So it's not just about being able to take what you got and hand it to somebody else, like a mirror. Um, it's the ability to be able to make modifications so that it suits your needs better, and then to hand those to your, to your friends and neighbors 
so that they can benefit and so that the community as a whole uh, can grow. Um, these are all these are all kind of uh, kind of important uh, to me. I think um, it leads to uh, one of the next uh, things that is sort of a falsehood um, that we like in the media. Um, so one of the free software licenses that that you may or may not be aware of uh, is the is the the GNU General Public License. Um, and uh, it's been said um, more than once that it's anti-business, um, that it, is, it, is, it goes contrary to, uh, to the needs of making, making lots of money. Um, specifically, this was said by Microsoft. Um, so uh, it was specifically said by Microsoft uh, sort of as Linux was coming into prominence. So one, one might doubt the, the motivations um, behind, the, behind the speaker of that. Um, uh, but I would, I would argue that um, it's, it's proven to be uh, quite blatantly uh, untrue. Um, uh, so the, the definition of eating crow, uh, in case you don't know uh, all of the American colloquialisms that we, we like to use, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a colloquialism called eating crow, and it is uh, humiliation by admitting wrongness or having been proven wrong uh, after having taken a strong position. Um, I find a fun definition of this uh, to be the recent announcement of Microsoft purchasing Revolution Analytics. Uh, which is a company that specializes in the R programming language for doing big data, uh, uh, big data processing. Uh, the R language is GPL and is in fact uh, a GNU project. Um, so I, I really hope that uh, Microsoft is enjoying that, uh, that position that they took, that, um, that it's anti-business. Maybe this will anti-business them. Uh, maybe this business transaction of, of quite a decent amount of money will, uh, will turn out to be a, uh, a, a thing that turns them all into raving hippies. Um, that would actually be kind of cool, um, to, to be entirely honest. Um, uh, but I, I, I doubt it. Um, a couple other things that might come to mind uh, relating to the GPL in business. Um, uh, it was mentioned earlier that I, I used to work for MySQL. Um, we, we got bought by Sun Microsystems back when Sun Microsystems existed uh, for a billion dollars. I did not see all billion of those dollars. Uh, if anybody knows where I could find them, uh, I would really appreciate it if, if they, could, they could come back to me, maybe return them to Lost and Found. Um, after that, Oracle, uh, who isn't really the world's most friendly to, to things like this, um, they, they bought Sun. This has put us into the position where Oracle is quite happily um, uh, hacking on, developing, and shipping GPL software. Um, so I'm, I'm not really sure how that's doing for them business-wise, but uh, from what I hear from my friends who still work there, uh, they're, they're not seeing drops in uh, income or revenue uh, in, that, in that division. Um, so I think that's, that's working out for them all right. Um, anybody heard of Linux? I mean, we are at scale. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, I mean, there's this, there's this guy named Linus uh, who's from Finland. Uh, he you know, had a student project and some people uh, you know, hacked on it with him. Uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, you, you may or not may or may not have, have heard of it. Um, so uh, a couple things I'd like to point out from the anti-business uh, aspect of that is that Android, uh, which is based on the Linux kernel, is the market-leading mobile operating system in the world. Um, it's, uh, you know, that's, they're clearly anti-business. It's, uh, it's, it's killing everyone's profits uh, and, uh, and cutting into, into all sorts of horrible things. Um, Linux also completely runs most of the web. Um, Google and Facebook and Twitter all run on, uh, all run on, on Linux. Uh, I'd also like to point out that they all run MySQL as well. Um, so if we wanted to go to uh, some of the other things that people say that are just patently false uh, and they talk about MySQL not scaling, um, I'd like to point out Google and Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, but this isn't a talk about me uh, trolling about MySQL. Um, it could be. I could just do that for the next half hour, but um, but it won't. So um, so those are but those are some pretty, pretty big companies. They've got a lot of resources. They can spend it on dealing with the software that comes from all these hobbyists who are just in their in their in their garages. But what about people who are who are garage companies themselves? Startup companies, you know, uh, clearly those are people who have business in mind because they're they're starting a thing and they've got business plans and, and they want to do that. So, I mean, I I I work for a Silicon Valley startup company. Um, I don't know if you've heard of us. We uh, we make a really great line of calculators um, uh, <laughs> and uh, and other things like that. Um, uh, there's a there's a great uh, garage uh, in Palo Alto that you can go check out. We may have also invented. Um, Silicon Valley startups, um, but uh, but in any case, uh, there's a really great Linux uh, stat that I love from HP is that we ship a server with Linux on it every minute. 
um, every minute we ship a Linux server. I mean, we don't actually physically ship one every minute. That's kind of an average. Like, you know, there's not like just a machine that's over there like, <laughs> wait, God, I'm getting another Linux server out. We're going we're gonna to miss our quota. Um, but, uh, but, but we do on, on average ship one every, every minute. The business unit inside of HP, because as a, as a Silicon Valley startup, I'm sure you know that things grow really quickly. Um, and so we, we at this point have business units inside of the, the company. Um, that, the business unit that does that is a $28 billion business. Um, so, so I'm not really a hundred percent certain why it is that we that we think that uh, that, that GPL or, or free software in general might be anti-business. Um, I'd, I'd say that probably every every single piece of evidence uh, shows it's the contrary is true. Um, but but whatever. So so that's just really me ranting. Um, why is why is free software um, uh, why is free software important? Why does it matter that free software is business friendly or isn't business friendly? Um, and then I'd actually like to go back to the Lemmings uh, story. Um, so I'm sure everybody knows uh, because we should all definitely keep up with Super Bowl commercials. Um, uh, probably everybody knows Apple's famous 1984 Super Bowl commercial uh, with the 1984 imagery and the you know breaking out and like that. Uh, you may be less aware of Apple's less popular 1985 Super Bowl commercial, uh, which is known as the Lemmings Super Bowl commercial, which featured uh, people walking off of cliffs uh, to their deaths. Uh, this was how they decided to announce uh, Macintosh Office. Um, I don't even remember Macintosh Office, so I think all of that kind of didn't really work out very well for them. Um, uh, and then also in 1997, when, uh, when Steve Jobs came back to, to Apple after they had been morons and kicked him out the first time, um, uh, they, they started the Think Different campaign. Uh, these are all different campaigns, and, and they don't even do Think Different anymore. That actually only lasted for, I think, two years, um, uh, because I should know things about marketing and advertising campaigns. Um, but the basic, the basic premise of all of these came down to don't be a lemming. And by this, they don't mean the actual lemmings who don't jump off of cliffs. They mean the, the, the mythological lemmings that in, in droves do jump off of cliffs, uh, implying, uh, implying that, that what you should do is, is you should, um, well, buy their products. Um, there's, a, there's a guy in, in, the, in the 70s named Frank Zappa, uh, 60s a little bit as well. Um, there's a famous quote from him uh, that uh, everyone in this room is wearing a uniform and don't kid yourself. Um, the idea of this being that there were a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of counterculture people, especially in the 70s, um, that were amongst his, uh, amongst his ardent uh, listeners. Um, and uh, his, his kind of point was, yeah, you, you might be thinking that you're being different, uh, but you're all being different in exactly the same way. Um, I noticed this. I live in Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Um, if you have ever been there, it's possibly the hipster epicenter of the world right now. Um, and I kind of feel weird sometimes when I walk outside in a, in a, in a t-shirt and non-skinny jeans um, uh, because, because everyone else around me uh, has handlebar mustaches and like top hats and you know, all sorts of, of crazy things like that. Um, and it's actually really impressively amazing um, how identical uh, the, the, the particular set of people. And it's, this isn't, this isn't uh, unique to right now, uh, obviously. There's always been the, the, sets of, uh, the sets of folks who are, are different in the same way. Um, that's okay. Like, you know, you should, you should do the thing that you want to do. Um, so, so in general, um, I, I think that the, the Think Different campaign and, and the other, the Lemmings campaign and all that isn't actually about allowing for individualism. It's, it's about defining an alternate tribe. It's about saying, hey, these people over here are uncool. You should come join us and be cool with us in the, in the different way. Um, uh, and we can all be different together in the same way, um, which is fine. If you want to do that, if you, if you like that alternate tribe, uh, that's, that's uh, particularly uh, your choice. Um, also, to echo Frank Zappa, don't kid yourself. This is about selling product. Um, this is not actually about defining who you are as a person. It's about uh, what product uh, you might be associated with. Um, but the, the, the real question that I've got is, what if you're, what if you're this poor fellow? What if your, your attempts at being a cat um, are, are just intrinsically poor? Um, good cats have the qualities of being fluffy, uh, of not being oily, uh, of not being moist, um, and not really being covered in straw. Um, but, but, you know, some, some cats don't have those qualities. Um, and not for lack of wanting, this cat would like to be as good a cat uh, as he can. Um, and he just, he just, you know, he's just going to be who he is. Um, in case you aren't aware of the worst cats.tumblr.com uh, Tumblr feed, I highly recommend uh, that you go look at it because I just think it's funny. 
um, uh, and uh, you get to see lots of pictures of of cats who are very, very bad at being cats. Um, but you shouldn't judge them, right? Like it's not their fault they're not good at being cats. Like that doesn't mean that you should you should not enjoy them in your presence. Or uh, you know that you should that you should ostracize them for not conforming to uh, to your expectations of what cats are. Um, we should we should allow that cat to be the cat that it wants to be, um, which which gets me sort of to 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 uh, hopefully in a more uh, uh, sane way um, to why this is is important. Um, how how much of each of your lives is computerized? How many things in your life are based on computers? How how much has have computers uh, taken over basically the entire world? And how many of those four freedoms do you have with, with each of those things? Um, free software has actually won. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the idea of proprietary software is ridiculous. Anybody that's out there that thinks they're going to sell a proprietary software product, is, is, it's a laughable concept, right? To a degree. Um, because we've, we've come up with some people who have come up with some very clever ways to sell proprietary software and call it free. Um, they'll, they'll give you most of it, uh, and you can, get some, you can get some value add. You can get, some, you can get some, this little, this little plug-in here that makes it actually work. Um, the, the open core proponents think that they're really clever uh, uh, and, and think this is a great idea. I think that they're um, uh, full of it, actually, uh, and making the world a, better, a worse place. Um, but that's, that might just be me. Um, I don't know if you noticed this happened recently. Um, but, uh, but it turns out that, that somebody at Lenovo, um, not that I want to pick on uh, uh, people who might be in a similar business to the, the company that I work for, but um, you know, these, are, these are just the facts as they happen. Somebody at Lenovo thought it would be really good um, to install something on people's computers to help them shop better. Um, and, and it would do that by uh, man in the middling all of their web traffic so that it could figure out what it is that they were uh, doing in general so that it could make uh, more invasive uh, suggestions uh, in terms of, uh, of, of maybe they want to, to buy more things. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I usually don't think to myself when I'm buying a computer, wow, I really want that to have more ads. Um, but, uh, but that's apparently what, what they thought would be uh, adding, um, adding value to their customers. Uh, my, lap lap tear, my laptop did not come with any software such as this. Uh, if it had, um, I'm empowered to remove it. Um, I, I do not have the Superfish problem um, because I do not run software on my, on my laptop uh, that is, uh, that is a, a corporate channel for selling me product or ads. Um, there's enough of that with these really annoying JavaScript overlay ads on the web anyway, and I swear I will give you all of the excess billion dollars that I didn't get from MySQL to the first person who solves blocking those monstrosities. Um, especially on my phone, where it's really hard to, to make them go away. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm ranting now. So um, I don't actually usually quote executives from big companies, um, but there's a, a, the, one, one, of, one of HP's founders is a, is a fine fellow named David Packard. He's the guy with the garage. It was his garage that, that, they, that they did stuff in. Um, and, uh, and I think it's, it's, really, it's really telling to, to, to see a, a quote like this from, from somebody who built a, a company the size of, of HP. Um, and I'll read it because I have no idea if people can read it from back, back in the back. But you know, what, why are we here? I think many people assume wrongly that a company exists solely to make money. Money is an important part of a company's existence if the company is any good, but a result is not a cause. We have to go deeper and find the real reason for our being. Um, uh, in short, um, we, need to, we need to think about making the world a better place. Um, we should leave the world better than we, than, we, uh, than we found it. And it's entirely probable, as I hope HP is a good example of, that you can, you can do that and make $28 billion a year selling Linux servers. Um, uh, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a, a hopefully a, a possibility. Um, and, and to me, one of the, one of the reasons that, um, that I, I, work on, I work on free software. Because free software is a way that I personally can make the world a better place. And it may not be the way that you can do that. There may be other things. Um, my, uh, my cousin, Amanda, is a pediatrician. Um, she wakes up in the morning and she makes sick children better. Um, nothing I do on a day-to-day -day basis is going to have that much of a direct impact in making the world a better place. My other cousin, Mark, is a firefighter. Um, he, he goes out and runs into burning buildings uh, to try and save people. Those are, those are legit ways that people can make the world better, and I think that we all, uh, we all already know that we're, we're really impressed and proud of the people who put themselves in those sort of, 
those sort of service uh, positions. Um, that doesn't happen to be the, the skills that I have or the, or the position that, that I'm in in the world. But the thing that I can do personally is I can work on free software. Um, and I can, I can try my best to make the world a better place in that. And I don't believe, as I've mentioned before, that that is at odds with, with the possibility of making money, with the possibility of making tons of money. I'm still looking for a billion dollars if anybody's got one. Um, but I, I'd like to do that in, in somewhat of, a, of an ethical way that allows all of us to potentially make a billion dollars and not just me. Um, it's, it's a way, I think, that, that we can potentially reconnect with our humanity, uh, especially in the, in the sea of white privilege that is the tech industry. Um, if you've ever wanted to see exactly how terrible the place Silicon Valley is, I recommend going to the Rosewood Hotel on Thursday night. It's called Cougar Night. Um, it is where all of, all of the VC people and all of the people who want to be the VC people get together and throw a frat party that is absolutely atrocious. Um, there, there, are, there are just women squatting in corners on the floor. There's people spilling down all of the, all of the, the, uh, the stairways. It's, it's really, really embarrassing. And as an industry, we should, we should be appalled um, that that is, that is a, a place and that is a, a set of people that we look up to. Um, so so in, in some ways, working on free software is a way that I can possibly try and make up for the absolute, absolute awful place that Cougar Knight uh, on Sand Hill Road is. Um, free software also drives an unprecedented amount of innovation. The internet is free software, my friends. Um, everything that we're doing, everything that we're doing over the last 20 and 30 years that's been useful or, or, or mind shattering has been based on free software. All of it, all of the really important things. Um, we're starting to pull back from that. Um, we used to have these walled gardens called Prodigy and CompuServe and America Online, and they weren't really all that particularly successful. The internet kind of, kind of pants them. Uh, it, came, it came by and said, you know what? Anybody can look at the, at the HTML on any, of these, on any of these web pages. That's built in. That's been there since day one. The internet has been free software for forever, um, and it, it's working really well at it. We've got these new walled gardens, like, like the Facebooks and the Googles and everything, that have all of our data locked inside of them, and they start with protocols that are, that are free and open, and then they kind of start to morph them in all the ways that we used to get really mad at Microsoft for doing. Um, but for some reason, because Google says don't be evil on a, on a logo behind their head, we give them a pass when they, when they start to turn off XMPP support from their chat protocol. Um, we, we, we give them a pass when, when, when Google and Yahoo both start doing really, really horrendous thing to mail headers, um, which breaks all of, the, all of the free software mailing list uh, software that's out there. Um, so if you're running Mailman and you're sending mail to people on your, recipients on your list who have Yahoo Mail, Yahoo's mail servers are broken uh, and, it, and it messes up those mailing lists. But they say it's not a problem because you can just use our web forums that do the same thing because that's a way for them to draw people into their, into their thing. So when I work on free software, it's also so that I can make sure that we have an even playing field where all of us can innovate and where everybody can, can, can spin up the, the next new thing and everybody's, everybody's getting an even playing field. Um, finally, I work on free software because I can. Um, I work on free software because, uh, again, and I can't believe I've made two quotes from, from, a, from a large corporate executive, um, but tenant number one uh, in, the, uh, in the garage, in the HP garage back in, back in 1939, I think it was, uh, they, had a, they had a list of, of 11 rules, and rule number one was believe you can change the world. Um, because, because if you don't believe that, uh, if you don't believe that your actions have, have impact, if you don't believe that you can make a choice that's actually going to have a positive impact on the world, then all of the rest of the stuff that you're doing is, is you know, it, it's, it's running in place. Um, if you can take this into heart, if you say, you know what, I can, I can actually change the world, then you can make the choices. You can make something, you can make one more piece of thing free software instead of, instead of closed. It doesn't have to be everything. We all have jobs. We all have things we have to do. Um, but we can find the places where we can, where we can do that uh, and we can hopefully make the, make the world a better place. Um, and with that, I will stop talking and I will let you guys have uh, hopefully a lovely, um, uh, a lovely uh, rest of scale. Cool. Um, so if you'd like, we can do some Q&A right now. Yeah. And uh, if you have a question for Monty, we'll just uh, ask Monty to repeat it but for the live stream. Questions, anybody? I think or you does anybody have that billion dollars I'm looking for? <laughs> no. What's that? God, there's so many better op options, honestly. There was a there was a there, there was a request on the Twitter on Twitter for Loveless. Love, yeah, that's yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we can't go back and undo. One of the downsides to democratic processes is, by gosh, once you've taken a vote, um, you've taken a vote. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't come out the way that you would have wanted to if you were the benevolent dictator of, of, of all humanity. Oh, well. So, anyways, yep. um, so uh, cool. thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. And thanks to uh, Monty for the fantastic talk. Uh, LPI exams start at 11 a.m. Uh, so if you're looking to get certified, head over to San Lorenzo yeah. C. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. And again, please awesome. remember to thank Digital Ocean yeah. for the coffee this they morning. They really are, aren't they? Yeah.